So I think I'd better set the record straight, because last week I said something that got a lot of comments, which is good. I appreciate all your comments, both positive and constructive. But what I said was that you don't really need the full seven note major scale. And it turns out most of you actually completely agree. In fact, some of you said that when you started learning guitar, you first learned how to play the full seven note major scale and you've never used it since. And of course, that's one main reason. But someone in the comments, actually a few people, had a really good point. They said, Blue, you like to talk about targeting intervals a lot. Well, how do you know where all the intervals are if you don't know the full seven note major scale? And I thought, well, that's a good point because I didn't mention that. And I do have a good answer for it. So there are two main reasons why I don't think you should bother learning the full major scale, at least not yet. Most of the genres that we all want to learn how to play, they are pentatonic based songs. They are pentatonic based solos. They are pentatonic based riffs. So we should start by learning the kind of scales that they actually use in those songs. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, you're going to learn music. You got to start with the major scale. It just seems like the obvious place to start. And I think you get a lot of this, especially from people who used to teach at college level not naming any names. But like I said, if we focus on the goals that we have, and then we look at what's in that music, we should learn what's in that music. And then maybe one day we can learn the full major scale another day. So back to those comments in the previous video, some of you suggested that we would need to know the full major scale, the seven note scale, in order to know what intervals to target because one might argue, well, there's the seven notes in that scale, and those are the notes that we can potentially target. The pentatonic scale only has five of the notes that are potentially available for us to use. And that's a good point. But what I think it's missing is that there is a much easier way to find target notes that are in the pentatonic or even outside of the pentatonic. And not only that, but will help us to target notes for any chord at any moment, even as the chords in the song change. That is ultimately what's more important because let's say I'm in the key of A, that's an A chord there. Sure, the full seven note scale gives me all seven notes and I can visually see that for A, but it doesn't necessarily tell me right away what is, for example, the major third of D, because if we're thinking of the full A major scale, we're thinking of this note here as the six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But more importantly, when we're on the D chord, which is the four chord in the key of A, we're not thinking of that note as six of the key. It's more important to think of that note as the third of D. That's the significant target note that we might want at that moment. So that's a lot of numbers and chords, but let me break down and explain a little more easily what I mean by that. Essentially, we can use chord shapes to find the target notes. It's much easier because we already know the chord shapes, right? If you have not spent the time memorizing the entire seven note major scale, you don't need to. You already know where the significant intervals are because you probably already know how to play a basic A major bar chord or basic D major bar chord. And those are much more useful for finding the intervals that we might want to target. For example, let's say I wanted to target the major third of an A chord. I could think of the entire A major scale, yes I could, and I could memorize where a major third is in that scale, there's one there, but also that note is just in the A major chord, isn't it? It's right there. So if I already know how to play the A major chord, all I have to do is just memorize what are the intervals in that chord shape. They are root, fifth, root, major third, fifth, root again. Now, no matter what scale I'm thinking of at the moment, all I have to do is switch the way my brain is thinking about what I'm doing just for a moment and just think, well, I want to target the major third of A. There it is. So let's say I'm playing in A major pentatonic for our first example of this. We have an A chord and we're playing some cool stuff. In the extension shape there. 
there's my major third if I want to resolve on that sound. And I know that not because I've memorized that C sharp is the third of A major. Nah, it's too hard. And then you'd have to memorize it for every chord, right? And I know that not because I've memorized the full A major scale because I'm probably not playing that scale. I just know it because at that moment, in the middle of my solo, all I have to do is visualize not a scale shape, but the chord shape. And there's the major third. Let's give you another example. What if we were playing a kind of a bluesy song and we were playing a minor pentatonic, but often in blues, the underlying harmony might be an A7 chord, right? The chord underneath has a major third, so we can visualize that chord. We could visualize the A major chord, or we could visualize an A7 chord, mm, because that's the chord underneath. That's the true chord underneath, and guess what? There's the major third. We know where it is. So even though A minor pentatonic does not have that note, we visualize A minor pentatonic easy shape there. It's not in there, right? It goes right past it, but that's okay because I know in that particular song, the band over there is playing A7 and therefore A7 is this chord and therefore I can play that note or use it as a target note to resolve on that chord. Let's take an even more complicated example. Let's say I wanted to land on the minor seven of A7, because A7 has a minor seven, right? If all those intervals are, are a bit much for you, don't worry about that right now. That's not the main point. The main point is that you can visualize chord shapes to find whatever target note you need. So we visualize a bigger A7 chord. How about this one with its pinky way up here? That's the minor seven. I could be playing either A major pentatonic and go to that minor seven, even though that minor seven note is not in A major pentatonic. And I don't see how knowing the full A major scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, is gonna help me to do that kind of complex stuff. And when you get your, your kind of mind wrapped around how I'm doing this, you'll find it's actually pretty easy. Remember, all I'm doing is at one moment when I'm improvising, I'm thinking scale. Let's say I'm thinking A major pentatonic. <laughs> But then the very next moment, all I need to do is think about the chord shape that the band might be playing. Whether there's another guitar player there or not, it doesn't matter. I can visualize an A7 and then play a similar lick on A major pentatonic, but just imagine the shape of that chord in my mind and land on that note. I know that's gonna be a good note because it's in the chord of the song at that very moment. So it's not just a seven, a minor seven of the key, it's the minor seven of the chord at that very moment of this particular song that we're making up right now. That's all we have to do is just change the way we are thinking for just a moment in the middle of a solo, and it's not that hard. Because as guitar players, we get very used to visualizing things, right? This is all visual stuff. We don't need to think that the major third of D7 is F sharp. It doesn't matter, it's there. So how do we do all this? We've got to memorize, I mean, you've got to know those chord shapes, of course. You've got to know your major bar chords shapes, your minor bar chord shapes, your dominant bar chord shapes at the very least. And the more chord shapes that you know, like smaller versions of things, are helpful too. And then the next step is just to start getting used to knowing what's inside each chord, right? As guitar players, we always think of this as, well, that's an A bar chord. And yes, it is, of course it is. But there are notes inside it, and we're gonna memorize what they are. It's not that hard. Root, fifth, root, major third, fifth, root. And you can do that for lots of chord shapes. Just start with one, just start with that, that alone, right? And then put on a jam track and choose a note to target. First, you just think whatever. You think, um, you can think major pentatonic.
is a major third of A. Let's go to the four chord. Now, we can still think A major pentatonic if we want. But you know what? It's going to sound really cool if we think of the chord underneath and we imagine the chord underneath every now and then. Then we can visualize a scale shape, but also we can visualize the notes of D7. And no matter what scale we're playing, because we got options for scales, right? We could be playing a major pentatonic, or we could be playing a minor pentatonic, or we could be playing D major pentatonic at that moment on the D chord. It doesn't matter. We can still think scale for a bit and then think chord just for a moment and either just target one of the notes of the chord or even just outline the notes of the chord one after another. So let's say I'm on A major first. There's a root of A, or there's a fifth of A, or there's a third of A, or there's a fifth of A, or there's a root of A. Now let's go to the four chord. That's D, right? That could be a D major, or in a bluesy context, it might be D7. Let's do that. It'd be fun. But let's change scales. We could change to A minor pentatonic, right? Because we can do that on the four chord. And let's target a note of D7. I'm targeting this one. I like that one. That's the major third of a D major chord or D7 chord. Has a lot of character. Really, that I believe is how most guitar players are actually playing. Whether they tell you that's how they're actually playing. But I suppose I don't know. I don't know what's inside other people's heads. I just know that when I was learning all this stuff and I was taking private lessons and workshops and classes, I needed ways to figure out basically how to not fail the class, essentially. And I realized, oh man, if I just visualize the shapes, it's so much easier. And then when I got called on to answer questions in the class or to play something, oh boy, my heart was, my heart was pounding, I will say. But once I figured out these solutions, man, everything became so much easier. And you can do it too. We've got tons of this kind of stuff in my books, Guitar Soloing Like a Pro, book one and two. And we've got loads of these types of lessons with much more specific detail, with tabs and jam tracks that will help you to practice these ideas all on our Patreon group. And you can get seven days for free. So you got nothing to lose. And like we always do, we'll put a video on the screen here for you from the channel. My name is Blue Morris and I teach guitar lessons here in Vancouver, Canada. I'll see you in the next one.